What's going on guys, it's Simo. So today I want to bring to you a video discussing how to use net decking to your advantage. Now I know what you all are thinking, but don't worry, just hear me out. Because I feel that net decking has a general negative stigma when it comes to not only Yu-Gi-Oh, but really any card game in general. Because just by the fact that you thought, oh, he's going to talk about net decking, pretty much goes to show that I'm right in that respect. But net decking actually has a lot of benefits when used correctly. I mean, I net deck, my friend friends net deck, hell, some of the best players in this game net deck because they know that it's a very effective tool when used properly. So we're going to discuss some of the healthy aspects when it comes to net decking and how it can help make you a better player. So the first and probably the most important aspect when it comes to net decking, I feel is it helps you learn the ins and outs of a deck without having to build the deck yourself. Now, this is applicable when Let's say there's a new archetype that's just released, or maybe there's an archetype that's been out for a significant period of time, but you haven't taken the time to learn that deck. Well, why would you want to take the time and build the deck yourself in a suboptimal manner when you don't understand how that deck fundamentally works, when you can go online, look at the latest YCS results, take a template for that deck, and basically use that deck to help you learn how the deck works, how the cards interact with one another, and how the cards work together to ultimately achieve the deck's win condition. Basically, by using net decking in this respect, you're helping set yourself up for success because if you're gonna build the deck yourself from scratch, you might include cards that have absolutely no reason to be in that deck in general. And that means that these are gonna be dead draws or they're not gonna have any place in whatever specific matchup you might be playing against and ultimately you're going to be setting yourself up for failure because then you're going to be losing and you're not really going to be learning a whole lot when it comes to the deck especially at a competitive level. I feel that this is very important especially for newer players because when a newer player is trying to learn not only just any deck but especially a competitive deck it's best to pretty much give yourself the best tools available so that you're able to learn that deck rather than wasting time with suboptimal builds. This is also good though for the casual player that's starting to become a competitive player because it helps train your mindset for that competitive mentality and get you in the right frame of thinking. Now another instance where net decking is very beneficial is for budget players. Now all the time you hear people complain how oh Ash Blossom is a 70 to 80 dollar card or oh this card is so expensive or this card is so expensive and that's a very valid point to an extent but net decking can help alleviate that problem to an extent if you want to think of it this way. If you take the time in net deck online and take the time to figure out what cards you want to use for that specific deck, then it's going to help benefit you because you're going to see that these are the cards that have been proven to do well in a specific deck, especially if you're net decking from, let's say, a YCS, because that's typically where a majority of players are going to take their decks from, because those decks have a given track record. Obviously, if a deck made it to the top 32 of a YCS, it has a pretty decent track record, and then especially when you count the number of times that deck made an appearance in the top 32. So so by net decking and utilizing these templates to kind of look and see, okay, these are the cards that pretty much every deck in here is using, then those are the cards you're going to want to keep your eye on. And basically, because you don't have to spend any money on all the cards in a given deck or archetype before pretty much placing your money in that position, you're able to choose and select the cards you want to play so that you're being incredibly smart with your money and minimizing costs. And you're also minimizing risk at the same time as well because you know that these are the cards that you're going to want to play with because you've experienced them firsthand without getting the cards first finding out that they're not the cards you want, and then having to pay for it a lot later. Now, net decking is also beneficial for rogue and anti-meta players, and I know I can just feel the cringe right now for every rogue and anti-meta player out there because, oh, I'm not a meta sheep. I would never do something like net decking. But again, just go ahead and hear me out. 
If you're net decking the best and top meta decks in any current format, like for instance, the top decks at the current moment are Spiral, Pendulum Magician, and Trickstar. If you're able to net deck those and play those, whether it's online or maybe with friends, if you just have some proxies lying around that you're gonna make the deck like out of paper, then you're able to play those decks and understand those decks from the perspective of the meta player. And this allows you, as the rogue or the anti-meta player, to construct and develop your strategy and help recognize patterns for how you can defeat these decks with a sort with any sort of rogue or anti-meta strategy that you see fit. This is why we see decks like Barrier Stun come to life. This is why we've seen counter fairies do well. This is why we've seen just a wide variety of different decks pretty much just come out of absolute no nowhere because these players were able to analyze the meta that their decks were playing in and develop counter strategies that combated the majority of the meta decks that they were going to be expecting at a YCS level of event. So not only is this beneficial for you, but I mean it's really beneficial just for everyone as a whole in that respect. Now the last thing I wanted to discuss is that net decking also helps benefit you and make you a better deck builder. Now that may seem a little bit contradictory at first, but let me go ahead and explain. The reason why net decking helps make you a better deck builder is because when you net deck and you're starting to learn and understand whatever deck or archetype you're attempting to learn, you're going to start noticing patterns. You're going to start realizing when it comes to certain metas, as the metas evolve, you're going to notice that certain cards in certain instances may start appearing to be dead cards a lot more often than they should be. And this could be the result of maybe it was a bad choice to begin with, or maybe the meta has shifted to a point where a specific card might have fallen out of favor. But as someone who's taking a deck and net decking it in that respect, this is going to allow you to recognize those patterns and make the correct changes when adjusting and building the deck for yourself that you're going to have a more optimized version of a deck when going into a specific event. There's nothing inherently wrong with taking a successful template for a deck and modifying it by just a few cards because maybe the meta has shifted in a direction that warrants those changes to be made. And that's perfectly fine. The old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So why doesn't that also apply when it comes to competitive Yu-Gi-Oh as well? I think that's something where again, a lot of players kind of feel the social pressure to really not net deck because it's really looked down upon as something where you're not creative or you're just a meta sheep or any of these other just statements that people make when it comes to it that really just people succumb to that negative social peer pressure and really just are just robbing themselves of such an incredibly powerful and potent tool that it helps hinder them from becoming a better player. Now at the same time, net decking does have its downsides and that's the thing. The biggest thing I want you guys to take away from this video is do not become overly reliant on net decking because while net decking is an incredibly powerful tool for the reasons I've stated throughout the entirety of this video, there are some downsides as well. I feel that net decking can hinder you and stifle your your growth from becoming a better player as a whole if you become too reliant on it. And that's because it hinders your decision making and ability to analyze certain aspects of the game in a critical way. I feel like if you have a reliance on net decking, what might happen is you might have the tendency to blame the deck rather than yourself and rather look at it in a very self-reflexive way rather than seeing what you did wrong. You'd have a tendency to blame the deck because you didn't make the deck. It's a deck that someone else made that you're just using and there's kind of that tendency there to really just blame the deck rather than you but that's not what net decking is for net decking is a tool that you want to use to capitalize on your ability to understand those patterns when it comes to certain matchups when it comes to understanding how the decks function how the cards interact with one another and the ability for the deck to perform at any given level and so this is where you really just need to take 
take the time, look upon yourself, and really take that moment to really analyze those board states, really understand why this card works in this deck, because from there, you can take that deck that you did net deck, build it into something of your own, either by modifying just a couple cards for a certain meta, or by just building the deck entirely from scratch by yourself, because you feel that you've understood the deck now at an entirely new level than you did once before, make the deck your own, and you're going to feel fully confident going into that next event that you made the right choice by playing that deck, and net decking ultimately helped you get there. But guys, those are just my thoughts on net decking. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about net decking as a whole. I'd really love to hear your thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video informative, consider backing me on Patreon because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time. Let's <laughs> go.